My dear brothers and sisters, today I'm actually privileged to share with you one of the most profound event that ever happened uh, in the church and especially to the saints in Africa. And this was uh, the very, very time when I was actually investigating the church. And this was uh, in February 1998 when President Gordon B. Hinckley visited actually Kenya and I think it was his tour in Africa and that uh, this was the first I think one of the first prophets of the church so to speak to have ever laid his feet or visited Africa you know he was one of the first prophets to visit Africa President Gordon Binkley and this was very profound uh, during this time and uh you could be you could imagine how it was you know how it was and uh, uh, that is the time when i was actually investing in the church and i remember visiting one of this conference when i was a non member i was an investigator and uh, a friend of mine told me look here you need to accompany us so i went and i, I saw i saw the prophet and i listened to what he had to say and without further ado let me just invite you so that we can follow what President Hinckley actually did then. Okay? What President Hinckley actually really did then, what he said and what he promised the saints uh, 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 when he visited Africa. And you know, when he came to Africa, of course, Africa is a continent. For those who are not aware, Africa is a continent that it has about 52 countries. And uh, President Hinckley visited about four of these countries within Africa. And I think Africa is one of the second largest continent after Asia. Mm? It's, the, it's the second largest continent after Asia. And uh, in the, that is in the world, of course. And you can see he was, you know, he made history that him being the first uh, president of the church to have visited actually Africa. And this was very significant to most saints in Africa. So please, let me just uh, invite you so that we can uh, listen to this. President Gordon B. Hinckley made history in February 1998. He became the first president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to visit Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and Zimbabwe, the third to visit South Africa. Twenty years ago, few, if any, Latter-day Saints lived in African nations outside of South Africa and what was then Rhodesia. Then another LDS leader received a revelation. In June 1978, President Spencer W. Kimball said, the time had come for the church's priesthood to be given to all worthy males. Within months, missionaries made their way to some of the nations of the vast African continent, and almost overnight, entire congregations sprang up. In February 1998, President Gordon B. Hinckley went to see the remarkable things that have happened in a single generation. They had hoped for it, prayed about it, even dreamed of it. And now their prophet was coming. I never thought in my lifetime I will uh, ever see the face of the prophet. <laughs> Look, if it was a dream, I would say, ah, it's just a dream. But it's real that the prophet is going to be here in my home. He's coming to Nigeria, not in Lagos. He's coming to Potako. It's like the prophet is coming to my house. Most of our children, the story about the prophet sometimes looks like a fairy tale. Yeah. Because the thing is a kind of very big uh, personality, you know, it's somebody that is very close to God. But for the children, seeing the prophet face to face is going to be something wonderful. In Nigeria, Latter-day Saints organized work parties to completely scour the government-owned civic center in Port Harcourt the conference would be held. 
we had specific days, all members in the state. We fixed specific period of um, the month and the weeks and they had to go there and wash the place and keep it clean for the regional conference because everybody wanted to see the prophet. In Ghana, they prayed more intensely than ever for what they wanted most, a temple. We are very hopeful and we are very sure that we're going to get one. And we are praying for it and uh, we know that the Lord will uh, answer our prayers by giving us a temple. In, in the, in the not-too-distant future. In Kenya, they extended invitations to their brothers and sisters in neighboring lands and to their friends who might be interested. And I've been searching for myself. I need something new in my life. And just seeing the number of Kenyans that have come out, I think that Kenyans are looking for something new, something real, and I think the church really stands a, a big chance of spreading themselves in this country. In Zimbabwe, where the church has had a presence since the 1930s, they looked forward to a unifying experience. The gospel is for Africa. I smile when I think of the fields are white to harvest. I say, no, 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 they're black to harvest. <laughs> we have got them, and we can reap great rewards. And the sweetest people, as I say again, I've ever met are the people of our own country. And in South Africa, a 98-year-old woman a colored woman, as she is called in South Africa, who became a Mormon in 1920, prepared to meet her third prophet leader. And the chief that I went to is now Mobley. You know Mobley? Eh? Mobley, yes. That's our branch. And they we all got baptized in that church. Yes, the Latter-day Saints of Africa prepared to welcome President Gordon B. Hinckley to see him, to hear him, to be strengthened in their faith. an historic moment, a first for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in all of Africa. The priesthood leadership session of the first regional conference ever held on the vast continent. Priesthood leaders from at least four of the church's eight stakes in Nigeria gathered in Port Harcourt, just as Latter-day Saints do now regularly in Salt Lake City and many other parts of the world, to receive instructions from their leaders often general authorities. This audience is a miracle. The, the start of the church, always just a little seedling, just a beginning, just one of a city and two of a family. It, that's just the way it starts. It started 15 years ago for Kalu Iche Kalu. I joined the church when um, President Spisa W. Kemba was the president of the church. Almost immediately, he was called to serve in the presidency of his branch. Since that day, as he says, he's never been able to sit in the congregation. He's always had leadership responsibilities. Now he's Bishop Kalu, struggling to oversee a burgeoning membership. We were split, I think it's November or September. The sacrament meeting attendance is about uh, one Sunday we were, when Eldaika was there, we were 305. That is to say, 305 and there was no seat. He said, well... <laughs> That's the way it's been in Nigeria since the first official missionaries entered the country in 1978. But even before those missionaries arrived, beginning in the late 1950s and through the 60s, congregations of people calling themselves the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sprung up spontaneously in Nigeria. They'd come across church... The one of the most profound uh, event that uh, ever happened in Africa, and especially uh, in, in Kenya, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, and Zimbabwe. That was very significant when President Hinckley visited because it was he was the first uh, uh, a prophet of the church to have visited this country. But again, he was the third because South Africa had been visited by by Spencer W. Kimball and, and, and the rest, and uh, President Hinckley became the third uh, 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 prophet to visit South Africa. But uh, in the northern Sub-Saharan uh, countries that like Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and, and Zimbabwe, n n no leader, like uh, the prophet of the church had not visited uh, those, those countries. And, and we had a bulging number of the saints who were actually, the church had already grown and uh, 
areas like Nigeria, we had people who had already joined the church even before the priesthood declaration. They were already gathering, you know, already gathering under, and the church will send missionaries from South Africa to come and baptize uh, the saints in Nigeria. And, and, and you could see after the priesthood declaration, you can imagine how much that really meant uh, to the saints there. So to me, I feel that the Lord has his way of doing things which no man can really understand because he says, my ways are not your ways. Okay, and he says, uh, just like the heavens are above, so his ways are much higher than our ways. So we may not actually be able to comprehend uh, the ways of the Lord, but he is actually the chief architect of everything, and he knows how to govern and lead his kingdom. And uh, I remember during this time, I had seen in my country, Kenya, all the newspapers had written one of the greatest topics had written about the saints in Africa. And then one of the biggest topic was the Mormon leader visits Kenya. And it was like a talk of the town. Uh, people were asking, who is this person? And, and, and during that time, a lot of people had not actually perceived the church very well. Some of them were associating the church with the, with the Masonic, that is the Freemasons. Others were associating the church, associating the church with, with the Illuminati, you know, cultic and all that. They were saying we are cult, the church is a devil worshipping. But uh, surprisingly is that uh, every time they will mention that, that is the time people will want to know more about the church. That is the time people will want to be more curious. You know, they will want to know more. Why is it that... They are saying this church is a devil-worshipping church. So they will want to know more. And in the course of them knowing more, then they end up joining the church. Uh, uh, until now, some of the congregations, like like I remember witnessing a whole church plus their pastor, you know, breaking up and missionaries ended up teaching the entire, the entire church congregation with their pastor. And they ended up joining the church. All of them became... Uh, members of the church and they've left the, the, the so-called congregation they were, they were actually congregating in. And uh, these are some of the greatest miracles that I've ever seen. I've always seen when, when the church exactly is, is establishing its, its place uh, somewhere. It is like the vision of, of, of Daniel, the prophet, uh, in, in reality, that uh, that stone that was rolled out of the mountain and it started breaking other kingdoms. Uh, in actual sense, I've seen other kingdom, kingdoms being broken when the church is established in a place. You find some other churches are actually, you know, breaking out uh, because people end up knowing the truth and they, they follow where the truth is. At. And these are some of the things that I ended up realizing and I saw and I witnessed. So this was a very great day, a very profound day for the saints in Africa to have actually seen, to have that opportunity of having a prophet of God visiting their countries. And ever since President Hinckley visited, we've had quite a number of uh, visits from different uh, leaders of the church, from the apostles from, and all that. And even now, uh, President Russell M. Nelson is now also moving around the world and he has been coming to Africa more often now, uh, which is actually a blessing and a more blessing uh, for people to always be able to behold their prophet. Otherwise, this is so great and wonderful, and uh, I pray that the Lord will still continue to strengthen us, and as we strive forth even to keep his word and, and, and follow him and listen from his prophet. I know this is true, and uh, I know if we keep on keeping on, remaining strong, then the Lord will always be with us. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you. Looking forward to see you again next time. Thank you.